All right, welcome everybody. We are going to go ahead and get started. A little bit of an echo here. Welcome. If you are joining us online through Facebook Live tonight or if you're here in the service, we want to welcome you to the Vineyard. Um, it is good for us to be here together again. If you are a visitor with us for the first time, we do have a, a gift bag for you with some information about the Vineyard, um, our mission here in Tioga County. There's a free gift in there, some candy. So if you didn't receive one as you made your way in, please Help yourself to one of those bags on the way out. I see there's one on the back table. There's also some in the connection counter. Um, if you are visiting and have any questions about the vineyard, uh, we have a welcome team. Jenna was out there, I see today. Um, if you have any questions, seek out those people. They typically have lanyards on that ask, say they can help. So any, any questions you have, seek them out. They will do their best to help you. Before we move into tonight's worship service, if you would take out a bulletin, hopefully you received that as you came in tonight. Um, inside that bulletin are a few different things. We've got a giving envelope. If you would like to give a gift to the vineyard, um, you can put that in the envelope, fill it out, seal it up, and there's a small basket on the back table. You can drop that in. We appreciate all those gifts. There's a connection card, big orange card. You can set that aside. We'll get to that in a moment. And there is a connection group flyer. So this is super important. Connection groups are going to start next week. This gives you a list of groups, days, times of meeting. Um, and at the bottom, there is a website you can go to to register to be in a group, or you can put that on your connection card. Um, real quick, just going through what we have available. On Monday nights at 6 p.m., our Table Talk marriage group is back. That's a group where you come, you have dinner, and you talk about marriage for about an hour or so. Um, and then, yeah, we pray for each other and, and are done. That was a great group last semester or last fall. Hope to continue that. Um, Sean and Nicole Mayo are gonna actually going to be leading that most of the time this, this uh, semester. We also have the Cuneos leading the Apostles' Creed. That's a study on the Apostles' Creed, again, Monday at 6.30. Uh, that will be at their home. The Bowers will be leading a Bible study, a walk through the Bible on Tuesdays at 6.30 at their home. Um, on Wednesdays, how many have heard of the Chosen like television series? Okay, It is about the, the life of Christ. Jenna is going to be leading the Chosen video series. So what it is, you'll get together, you'll watch the uh, episode of that se of season one, and then there's discussion questions, and you talk about that. So that's Wednesdays at six at the Teen Center. Uh, Dave and Trish Crick are going to be hosting our potluck potluck group. This is a group where you bring a dish to share, you have a meal together, and then you sit around and just discuss questions that are dropped anonymously into a crock. And so it's a, been a great group. We've done it several times. They'll be, uh, they'll be leading that. It's hosted at Mark and Connie Coopers, a.k.a. Bumpa and Manga. And then on Thursdays at 6.30 right here at the Dean Center, we are uh, hosting Financial Peace University. Um, this is for anyone that maybe wants to just take control of their finances, learn to save, learn to reduce debt. Um, it's a nine-week course, and it's several people here at the Vineyard have already been in it. Um, and had some good success with it. So um, those are the groups. Take a look. You can go to the web page and get this information as well. Again, sign up for a group either online or on your connection card tonight. Other things that we have going on. Who has not been to a dessert with the Kennedys before? Raise your hand. Oh, look at all the young kids. They know what's coming. Uh, might be a little youth group meeting. This Friday is Dessert with the Kennedys, and if you're newer to the vineyard or you've never been, it's just a time that we get together, adults only, um, where we just talk about the vineyard, the mission, the vision here in Wellsboro, and uh, we have some delicious desserts. That's this Friday, the 21st at 7 p.m. Um, if you are interested in coming, we would love for you to sign up tonight on your connection card um, so that we can prepare for that. Also in the bulletin, our men's hangout is next Sunday after the service, room 219, and we're just going to be playing euchre and hanging out. 
Don't worry if you don't know how to play euchre or don't even know what a euchre is. We'll teach you. Um, but that will be right after the service. Bring a snack to share, and we'll just have some time together, gentlemen. And then uh, Thursday, this coming Thursday, again, is our one-hour prayer night upstairs in room 219. Just get together and literally, for one hour, we just pray for our community and our church. Uh, would love to see more people out to that. Vineyard game night will be Friday, January 28th at 6.30. This is a family event. Bring a snack to share. We'll be in the grand community room. Bring your favorite board game. We'll just have tables set up. Play some games. There'll be some video games for you younger kids that like, like Mario Kart or Smash Brothers. Um, but it's a great time just to get together, fellowship, and play some games. And then um, bottom of that is our Marriage Encounter Weekend. Um, we've done this a few times, and then COVID hit, but we are ready to start that back up this spring. For any married couples, um, it's a, a weekend investment in your marriage to restore, reconnect, uh, refocus. The cost is $75. That includes lodging, meals, um, and the event for the weekend. It will be held March 18th through the 20th in the Holiday Inn in Elmira, New York. Um, and so, yeah, if you have not been through that, I highly recommend it. We have about five couples registered already. So uh, that is it for announcements. If you would take out your connection card, if you are visiting with us today, maybe the first, second, third time, would you complete the top half of that for us? Let us know where you're coming from and how you found us. Um, there's additional information there uh, to check that you may want to hear about. Um, if you're just a regular, if you're a regular attender, just your name's fine. On the back is a place for prayer requests, praise reports, and then to sign up for any of those events that we just discussed. Um, so we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. And I'll <laughs> Jason, I'm one of the worship leaders here along with this whole fantastic ragtag people that love Jesus and want to lead you in worship. Uh, so we're going to sing a few songs. We're going to praise God. We're not going to think about the snowstorm coming except all you kids who have school canceled tomorrow. Oh, a couple teachers. Good job. So just uh, stand if you can uh, and sing with us tonight. Jesus, I just thank you that we're here. I thank you that... Uh, as the family of God, we can come together. I thank you that as the family of God, we can worship together and we can uh, enjoy one another's company, one another's fellowship. And as we, sings, as we sing songs and, and uh, listen to good teaching, Lord, I pray that you meet us here. I pray that you fall on us. I pray that your presence is thick among us. I pray that uh, those that are here for healing get healed. Those that are here for salvation get saved. And those that are here for tired find rest. Oh, yeah. 
But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. Cause when you call my name.
our mothers and fathers come now and move among us what you did before come and do once more we want to be a part of your story God of our mothers and fathers. 
Jesus, come take this vineyard. Come take this vineyard in the middle of Wellsboro, in the middle of Tioga County, the north part of Pennsylvania, near New York, over here on the eastern side of the country. Lord, come take this vineyard and make us new wine. Give us the things, Lord, that are going to make us change. Bring the ferment. Bring the yeast that causes all the bubbles and all the strife and changes what we are from something into something new, into something fresh, into something amazing. Lord, come take this vineyard. It struck me, oh, am I on? It struck me as we were worshiping, there were more youth up there than adults. And it reminded me that on January 30th is Revolution Sunday, where the youth are back to taking over the service. And so we will have some of our younger, newer worship uh, kids up here leading worship for us. We will have youth doing welcome team, youth doing ministry team, youth. um, Where's Kaylee? Is Kaylee here? Kaylee Weatherford will be speaking up front along with Holden and Kayla. Um, So just a lot of the youth are doing it all. Uh, So that's exciting. So uh, January 30th, fifth Sunday of the month, be here. Uh, So It's good for us to be together this week, back here in the Dean Center. I will say, I contemplated being back on 45 Charleston Street. A little chilly, though. But, uh, and originally, we should have gone back to our study in Romans, but I'm going to change things up. We're going to switch gears for a few weeks. Um, And we're going to be talking about making some gains in our faith. So the word gain is defined as to increase the amount or rate of something or increase in wealth or resources. Um, I've learned recently that in the strength training world, this word gains is used a lot. And it means to increase in stamina, strength, and Plain weight training awesomeness. I love that. In short, making gains in fitness means to build muscle mass, which requires some type or several types of exercises and routines to be employed that isolate and work different muscles of the body so that they can begin to be strengthened and develop more mass. So one of the things I love about my personal relationship with the Lord is how he uses kind of the everyday circumstances of my life to reveal certain truths about faith. And so, um, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, since December 1st, I've been doing this, working on this strength training program at the local gym. And If you remember two weeks ago, I said that was a sermon for another time. Well, this is that time. Um, But in this program, each day I work through different exercises designed to help strengthen various parts of my body, like my arms or legs or back, back or shoulders or my core. And so over the last six weeks, as I've been working through these various routines, I just sensed the Lord saying several times, that building spiritual muscles that strengthen faith is not much different from how we build physical muscle to strengthen our body. So as we start this new year together, as we look ahead to 
um, some exciting times that are going to take place in the next six months here at the Vineyard. I think it's important uh, to spend a few weeks talking about how we can make gains in our faith by building up our spiritual muscles. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in this place, Lord. We just ask, Holy Spirit, would you come, would you move among us? Lord, we're here to hear directly from you tonight. And so, Holy Spirit, would you open our hearts and our eyes and our ears to hear from you that we may be changed in some way? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So tonight's key passage, uh, it's, it's one verse, comes from Ephesians 6.10. And if you're familiar with Ephesians 6, you probably immediately think of this, the verses pertaining to the armor of God. Um, as I ha always have. Um, but as I've been reading throughout, through it the last week or more, um, I've come to realize that verse 10 may be one of the most overlooked verses in the book of Ephesians anyway, um, because the verses about spiritual warfare, the verses about um, the armor of God seem to kind of take center stage. But if we read Ephesians 6.10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So finally is a key word here. Throughout the letter of the Ephesians, Paul has established the believer's place in Jesus, and then he continues with the basics of living out the Christian faith. And it's in this last section where he says, finally, speaking in light of all the things he's already told us. He's speaking in light of all that God has done for us. He's speaking in light of the glorious standing we have as a children of God. In the light of his great plan of the ages that God has made us part of. He's speaking in light of the plan for Christian maturity and growth that he gives us. In light of the conduct that God calls every believer to live. In the light of the filling of the Spirit and our walk in the Spirit. In the light of all this, finally, Paul says, we need to be strong because there is a battle to fight in the Christian life, and the first step of that battle is for us to be strong in the Lord. And I know I have, maybe you can say the same, I've missed that part before. I've skipped right from, skipped verse 10 and went right to verse 11 and, and 13 where it says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. And I've always gone right to that because it's powerful. There's a lot of power in those scriptures. But let's not miss that Paul says, first, be strong in the Lord. Then he says, put on the armor. Be strong in the, being strong in the Lord, having strong spiritual muscles, is an important part of wearing the armor of God. If you take a weak man or woman who can barely stand and give them the best armor in the world, they will still be ineffective because the weight of the armor is too much to bear if they don't have the strength to hold it. A good illustration of this that I found in the commentary, and I'll read directly um, from this. It says, before a soldier is given a gun or shown how to fire a missile, 
he goes through basic training. One great purpose for basic training is to build up the recruit's physical strength. It is as if the army says, soldier, we are going to give you the best weapons and armor possible, but first we have to make sure that you are strong and that you can use what we give you. Our first step is to be strong in the Lord so that when we put on the armor of God, as Paul discusses, we can use it effectively. The question naturally then becomes, how do we build spiritual muscles that are strong? And in verse 10, Paul says, by relying on his mighty power. The King James Version, I like a little bit better. It says, in the power of his might. Might is the inherent power or force. A muscular man, which I'm not there yet, But a muscular man, big muscles, displays his might, even if he doesn't use the muscles. His muscles are the reserve of strength, right? So all that flexing and stuff that people do, yeah, it looks good. There's might there, but there's nothing happening, right? Power is the exercise of might, when the muscular man takes and uses that, that iron bar and bends it, right, into a circle, he is using power. It means that the reserve, the strength in the muscle is actually in operation. God has vast resources of might that can be realized as power in our Christian life, but we have to actively work those muscles. We have to build them up and use them. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. The strength comes from him, God. First Chronicles 16.11 says, look to the Lord in his strength, seek his face always. And it comes, that strength comes as we seek the Lord. And we seek the Lord by following the example Jesus set for us and adhering to what he taught us about connecting with God through things like scripture study or reading, prayer, giving, service, worship, Sabbath, solitude, confession, repentance. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Our faith is strengthened as we build up our spiritual muscles as Jesus taught us. Just like I do dumbbell presses and elevated heel squats and one-minute planks to build up the different muscles of my body, I need to make exercises in prayer and scripture reading and giving and service part of my spiritual exercises to strengthen my faith. It's those exercises that develop my relationship with Jesus, and enables me to be strong in the Lord. And the same is true for all of you. So why is this important? We say to the youth, so what's the point of all this? Paul tells us in verse 13, when we are strong in the Lord, then... they. 13 says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. It's important to have strong spiritual muscles to be strong in the Lord because we need to stand our ground in this world that will do anything and everything to knock us down. 
The point is, God is calling us to do something. And so if you were at last week's service, uh, I talked about Solomon's prayer of dedication, and I ended with um, his charge to the people. And his charge to the people was to obey the Lord, obey his commands and decrees, and serve him, right? I believe that there is a time coming in the not-too-distant future where the Lord is going to bring waves of people that are ready to enter into his kingdom. And I hope that's through us here at the Vineyard, and I hope it's through every other church in Wellsboro. But a time is coming as we move into a new building and there's excitement just in the community of, of people wondering, oh, you know, I wonder what they did with that building. There's going to be an excitement. There's going to be, I believe, people seeking and not really knowing what they may be seeking, but seeking. And we need to be strong in the Lord to be prepared for what that means in ministry. Part of the reason that I decided to sign up for this personal training thing was because I saw a Facebook post of this kid that, that Lauren went to school with, who I knew, and, and he, he works at the gym, and, and he showed a picture of before, and he showed a picture after, of after, and I was like, whoa, I want that program. And so when I went to the gym and talked to him, yeah, I can, I can get you on a program like that, right? He, so we sat down, and, and, and he puts me on a program. And, and the, point I, the reason I tell you that is, bec is because as waves of people come seeking something and not sure what it is, but it may be Jesus, who are they going to seek? Someone that knows Jesus. Someone that exhibits the traits of Jesus. And so if they come to you or to me and they say, I want to know more about Jesus, are we prepared? Do we have the spiritual muscles to say, well, these are the things that I've done to develop a relationship with Jesus? If someone wants to start that relationship... They're going to go to the people that exhibit what they're looking for. The point, if you're following along in the bulletin for tonight, is that strong spiritual muscles produce a strengthened faith that enables you to stand firm in today's world. Are we strong in the Lord for whatever comes our way? Are we strong in the Lord to exhibit this relationship that we have with Jesus? Are we strong in the Lord to encourage others to start flexing and, and making gains in their own faith? So over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about how can we develop in our lives spiritual muscles that will strengthen our faith so that we are able to stand firm and we are able to minister in this community the things that Jesus teaches us in the Word of God? And we're going to talk about practical exercises in, in reading Scripture, studying Scripture, Prayer, worship, giving, service, Sabbath, and solitude. And word of caution here, if you've lifted weights before, 
you know those first couple weeks? It's painful. It's sore. Like, you get sore. The, the, the gentleman at the gym, my first leg day, he says, oh, you know, you're going to feel great tomorrow. Don't think that you've got it figured out. Because day two, you're not going to be able to walk. I'm like, oh, okay. So, go home feeling great. Next day I wake up feeling great. I'm like, oh, man, like... That evening, it was probably 11 o'clock, I was in the recliner, and, and Lori's like, well, let, let's go up to bed. And so I tried to get out of the recliner, and like every muscle in my body hurt. And it was just leg day. But like my shoe, everything just hurt. And so like I literally kind of walked upstairs and fell into bed. And, and the next morning, I th- was this when I... I'm not sure this is when I asked. I had to have Lori put my socks on. That was one time. I'm like, oh, this is sad. I am supposed to be, like, increasing my fitness here. I can't even put my own socks on. This is terrible. Um, And it happened to be leg day again. And so I'm like, I can't even, like, go down the stairs. How am I going to do leg day? And so I walk in, and the guy's like, hey, Brett, how are you doing this morning? I'm like, oh, second day. Second day kills. And he's like, yeah. And I said, I don't, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do today. And he's like, Brett, one exercise on legs, and you won't feel that pain. Okay, I'll take your word for it. One exercise, and I was fine until like six or seven hours later. <laughs> but sometimes it hurts. And the reason it hurts, guys, is because when you are doing strength training, You're literally tearing the muscle. You're tearing your muscle. And then as the muscle heals, that's what makes, regenerates more muscle and makes you stronger, right? So in our spiritual muscle building that we're going to be doing, you know, it may hurt a little. You may have to rearrange schedules to to really focus in on your relationship with Jesus. You may have to read scripture differently or try reading scripture differently. You may have to, all sorts of different things, make some sacrifices, and it may hurt. But here's the thing, that pain means that you're building some more muscle. You're building up that relationship with Jesus. And, and now I finished week six this week. I don't have that much pain anymore. My muscles have gotten used to, hey, this is the way life is now. Every other day, your legs are going to lift a lot of weight, and we're just going to be ready for it. I think that's what they say. So it may hurt, but that, that mom, just momentary pain means gains in our faith. It means we're building something stronger. So don't be afraid to feel sore or or feel that little bit of pain because you're developing spiritual muscles so that you can stand firm in this world and you can minister to people. Um, There is a reason, I think I have a photo, that in the strength training they say this. The pain means gain, so think of it that way. The other thing I'm going to caution is, in strength training, it's always good to have a spotter, someone who is willing to help you in case you tackle a little more weight than you may be ready for, or maybe someone that's just willing to hold you accountable and say, hey, are you going to the gym today? It's leg day. I know that it it hurts, but you got to go do legs. The same is true for our spiritual muscle building. Find a spotter. Find someone who can help you, who can hold you accountable, who can show, will show up and say, hey, you know, how is, how is that new way of reading scripture doing? Or, you know, have you, have you spent some time in silence and sol- solitude this week? Find that person and ask them to be your encouragement and your spotter. 
Because I believe if there are a hundred of us building up those spiritual muscles, the community, when they're looking, when they see this new building open, and they say, oh, you know, like, those people seem to be really living out what they, they claim. Like, let's check that out. We're going to have the muscles to back that up, to say, hey, this is what you could do to get started. So to conclude, before the worship team comes up, one, the very first thing that I had to do um, to start this program is I had to do a, a personal assessment. So basically, it was a little a report, and I had to tell what my goals were and you know, what was my time frame and, and what was my commitment level and how old I was and how much I weigh. And, and that was all fine. It was just a piece of paper, right? I filled it out pretty good. Handed in. He's like, okay, we, I need to track you on the treadmill, see how much cardio you can do over like a 10-minute span or whatever. And did that. Great. No problem. And then he pulls out the tape measure. And he says, okay, now we can skip this part, but really, if you're going to know how you're gaining, we really need to do it. And so I just need to take some measurements. And I'm like, in the lobby of the gym? Like, isn't there a better way, place for this? And he's like, we'll go in the back room. It's like, well, you can skip it. I'm like, no, I'm, if I'm going to put in the work, I want to know that I've gained something. And so he takes me and he measures my neck and he measures my biceps and then he you know, gets a little closer and does my stomach and my hips and my thigh. And it's all well and good. And I was just like, okay, you know, that's not terrible. And then he says, all right, I got one other thing. And, you know, this is, this is kind of the rough thing. And, and I cannot remember the name of the, the tool, but if you imagine a big old, um, what is it, a vice? Like, that, what's it called? Caliper. Caliper. He pulls that out. And I'm like, oh. What's that? And he's like, well, I'm just going to have to pinch this on portions of your body. I'm like, for real? And he's like, Whew. and he pulls out my shirt and clamps it right on my stomach. Humiliating. Humiliate. I'm like, oh, and he's like, this measures your body fat percentage. I'm like, and he did it on my back, and he did it under here, and he did it on my thigh. And guys, Really, that's where this whole thing comes from, because as I was, got back on the treadmill, I'm like, man, if I did that to my spiritual life, where would I find the fat? And so what we're going to do tonight for just a few moments is we're going to do our own personal assessment. And so I apologize. Amazon let me down. I had really nice journals for everyone and they were supposed to be here Friday, and then Saturday, and now next week. So they'll be here next week. If you've got some room in your bulletin, or, or you have a, your own journal or piece of paper, we're just going to take a moment and, and, and just kind of do our own self-assessment. You do not have to share this with anyone, but um, questions that we're going to ask, and, and just take a few moments, is what would you like your spiritual muscles to look like? Like, what's your goal? Maybe you ask, what areas, what areas of my spiritual life just seem to be a little bit on the heavier side that I need to slim down or tighten up or, or, or build some muscle mass? Some of you, this may be new, even thinking about spiritual things. Others, you, you may have been doing things for years and years and years but what, what would you like your spiritual muscles to look like? What is your, what's your goal? I'm going to give you just a few moments to kind of think through that.
And as you make that list and think about, what, you know, what, 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 do I, what would I like my spiritual life or my spiritual muscles to look like? Maybe I start to identify what areas need the most strengthening. I found when I started lifting, I have really weak arms. Like I could barely lift anything. And my left arm especially, I could barely lift anything. I was like, man, he's like, you know, first we need to get this arm to at least match this arm. So what are those areas that, you know, you, maybe you've tried and tried and you just feel like, I don't, I haven't gotten any strength there. I need to, I need to work on, on that. And then the next thing you're going to do as you're, you're making those lists is I'm going to give you a, a few areas where I think we all need to work on strengthening our spiritual muscles and just want you to think through your own personal, um, your own personal spiritual life with these areas and, and which of those, like, how are you doing with those? And you can use, I'm not, I don't like the word rate, but maybe you give yourself a smiley face or a frowny face or a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a scale from one to 10. But just consider how, how am I in these areas? These are the areas we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks. So the first one is prayer. How am I with prayer? The next one is scripture, and that's reading or studying. How am I with that? And don't go just, oh, I either do it or don't do it. Like, when I do it, is it, is it transforming me? Is it giving me life? Or when I do it, is it just because whew, I feel better and that's, that's a task off my to-do list today? Next one is service. How am I at serving, not just in the church, but serving others? How am I at looking at the needs of others and serving them? Next is giving, generosity. How are my generous muscles? Fifth one is Sabbath. Solitude, silence, whatever word you prefer there. How am I at just being still and knowing that he is God? And the last one is worship. How's my worship life? Do I worship 
expecting to meet with the Lord? Do I worship out of who he is to me and not what he does for me? Those are the things we're going to examine over the next few weeks. And as I said, it's really practical. How do we dig in and build those spiritual muscles so that we are reflecting the power and might of the Lord on this earth? And I encourage you, if you have got, hey, you know, I have this way of of studying the Bible that has worked really well for me, I want to hear that because it may well, may well work for someone else. If you found ways to, to, to really accelerate your prayer life and strengthen your prayer life, share those ideas because part of this whole study is not just going to be talking about the importance of prayer. It doesn't take much understanding of faith to know that prayer is important. It's how do we incorporate prayer into our daily life so that is it impacting me, transforming me, and sending a message to this world. So Father God, we just thank you for this night. We thank you that you have taught us in your word all the ways that we can grow strong in you. And Lord, not only have you taught us, but you sent Jesus to model and illustrate what that can look like on this earth. to stand firm in this world with a straight faith that is strong that reflects Jesus to others in your holy name God we praise and thank you amen
we invite you to come and to move among us. Lord, as we embark on, on just a journey of uh, becoming more like you and on strengthening in our faith, God, so that we would be a testimony of your goodness in this world, God, um, would you meet us in this place? Holy Spirit, would you come? We're going to move into what we call our ministry time. So we have a team of people who um, will be making themselves available towards the back, um, maybe up front here. Um, and, and they're here just to pray with you about maybe anything that's going on in your life that you just like a little additional wisdom in or... ...hears and heals. And so... Uh, we encourage you just to uh, go to one of those prayer team members. Can you guys just wave your hands so people see where you're located? Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to, to just ask tonight, you know, maybe you're here and, and you're not even sure about this following Jesus, what that all means. Uh, I just, I think this is a great time to start just to learn. What does that look like? What can that look like in my life? And, and, God sent his son Jesus to die for us, that we could have a full and complete life. Not just so we could go to heaven, but so that we could live as new creations with a new life here on earth. And Jesus came and he lived this amazing life as a model for us. And then he died on a cross for the, the brokenness that we possess. He died for us for, for the sins that we've committed intentionally or unintentionally against God. And Jesus died to bridge that gap so that our relationship with God could be restored and made new. And in that death, the scripture says, we are a new creation. Which means we have a new life and we have a new identity as children of God. And I just want to encourage you tonight, if, if you're in a place where you have never in, invited Jesus into your life and said, hey, take the wheel, and I'm not, I'm not sure how to drive it, but I'll follow you. If you're here tonight and you want to follow Jesus at the vineyard, we make it as easy as possible. Sorry, thank you, please. It's a simple prayer that you can pray on your own. You can pray with ministry team uh, people. And it says, I'm sorry, God, for all the things in my life that have come before, that have separated us, that have kept us at odds. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to show me what life can be like. Thank you for sending your son to stand in the gap, to die for my sins, that our relationship might be restored. Please forgive me for those things and show me how to live this new abundant life that Jesus promised. And so I'm going to encourage you tonight, if you're here and you've never prayed that prayer, but, but you want that new life, you want that new creation, reach out to someone that, to pray with you or, or, or just have a seat and pray it yourself. Let us know if you pray that prayer and, and we'd love to like talk to you about next steps. Holy Spirit, come. move in this place. And so if you feel led to pray for someone or, or um, you want someone to pray for you, like this is the time where you get to connect with Jesus. So we invite you, come Holy Spirit, move in power, move in might that we might be changed.
like you Move to action Full of mercy And compassion Our hearts Yes, Lord Come take control
your name. We praise your name that muscle is built, whether physical or spiritual. We praise your name that when we meet resistance, Lord, with your help, if we overcome, things tear, things change, things grow. As we go this week, Lord, I pray you bless us with resistance. I pray you bless us with a little bit of pain that, knows we're, that tells us that we're growing. I pray you bless us with sore bodies and sore spirits because we're working hard to be your hands and feet on this earth, because we're working hard to lift others up, because we're working hard to be what you've called us to be, and that is the brother of Jesus and the son of God, a son and a daughter of God. I pray that, Lord, this week, you would be with us in every single situation and you would be on our hearts and in our heads and in our lives and you would come out of our mouths and the love of Jesus would flow forth from all the muscle that we're building. In your name, amen. We're going to continue and play this song again. Um, we'll keep the lights down a little low.